I mean, let's bring in Arkansas Senator Tom Cotton. Uh, great to have you here today, sir. Um, we want to talk about a couple of things, especially with the big uh, hearing today on immigration. But can we start with this big this number, uh, what you think it will mean for what the Biden administration might do? I mean, it was just yesterday that President Biden said he was thinking about canceling one point six trillion dollars in student loan debt, which would arguably, I would say, be an inflationary to the economy. Dana, it would be inflationary to the economy, and inflation is clearly uh, a drag on economic growth right now. Uh, canceling that student loan debt would also be outrageously unfair to most Americans who didn't go to college, who don't have a college degree, who um, don't have student loans. So for every truck driver, plumber, welder, HVAC repairman, carpenter, who went to work and has been working hard every day since he or she turned 18 years old, they would be underwriting trillions of dollars of student loans for students who voluntarily made the decision to go to college and take up those loans. And just like someone who takes down a loan for a small business or a car or a home should be repaying the loans. If anything, it should be the colleges and universities who so poorly serve those students to help repay those loans. But if they go forward with this, on top of all the other spending and borrowing, as you said, it will contribute to more inflation, which means economic growth will face even more headwinds, as we just saw this morning when we got the reports for the first quarter. I'll turn it over to Bill in a sec. I just want to put up this poll for everybody to see here. Um, amongst Democrats, 66 percent say that Biden's economic policies are making no difference on their personal financial situation. Um, so you see that helping 23 percent, hurting 11 percent, but no difference. And you wonder if that will change after this week's news. I'll turn it over to you, Bill. Uh, it's OK. Um, Senator, the, the whole point about the colleges, some of these Ivy League schools have endowments that total billions and billions of dollars. If they want to pay for the tuition of their students, they can do that now to infinity. You don't need the federal government and student loans along the way. All right, different topic here. Mayorkas is on the Hill yesterday. He's back again today. This is part of his plan for um, May 23rd and beyond. Surge the personnel, transportation, medical facilities, speed up the processing of migrants. That, that is critical. I'll come back to that. Removal, detention, prosecution for unlawful entries, working with the NGOs, targeting cartels, working with other countries in the region to deter migration. If you look into this plan, it, it does not seem to address the illegals crossing the border. What it does is manage those who come across the border to effectively process them into our country. That seems to be the plan. Now, when he said this yesterday about effectively managing the situation, isn't that kind of what he's talking about? Uh, Bill, it goes to show how deeply ideological Joe Biden's approach to the border is. We should be protecting our border. The only people crossing our border should be those who have a legal right to cross the border. Illegal aliens have no reason to be in this country. They should be turned back. If they have an asylum claim, they should have to wait in Mexico for that asylum claim. That would be effectively managing our border. Alejandro Mayorkas and Joe Biden think an effective way to manage the border is to expedite the entry of illegal aliens. They're patting themselves on the back for surging resources to include, apparently, doctors and nurses from our Veterans Affairs hospitals and clinics to the border so they can get more illegal aliens into the country faster. It is a deeply ideological approach to, to, from people who don't respect borders. They think that borders should never be enforced. Senator, while we have you, I mean, I'm sorry, I and mean, maybe we have all these topics that we could get to, we could keep you for the next hour, but I did want to ask you about this because Secretary Mayorkas will probably have to answer uh, so, to the question of a disinformation board being created at the Department of Homeland Security. What do you make of all of that? And the woman that they chose to be in charge of it is actually somebody who said that the Hunter Biden laptop was disinformation. Now, maybe she's changed her mind after the other reporting, but she apparently would be in charge of this board. Yeah, the Department of Homeland Security and frankly, no other department or agency in our government should have something called a disinformation board. I mean, disinformation for this administration is mostly facts that are inconvenient politically for Joe Biden and the Democratic Party. The answer 
to bad speech or to flawed speech or to wrong speech, for most liberals traditionally throughout our history has been more speech and more persuasive speech. But because the Democrats see the polls slipping away from them, because they don't support the idea of free speech anymore, now they've labeled everything as disinformation or misinformation that doesn't fit into their preconceived storylines. This should not move forward. We should take steps in the Congress to make sure it doesn't move forward. Well, why would this be the responsibility of DHS anyway? It, it seems like a rather political statement. Am I wrong? Yeah, it just goes to show, too, that they're willing to twist language to fit their own needs. You know, Alejandro Mayorkas won't even call illegal aliens illegal aliens when that is what they are called in federal law. <laughs> Anything else that they don't like over at DHS or at the White House now just gets dismissed as disinformation. Uh, well, I think the voters see through that. I think they're going to deliver a sharp rebuke to Joe Biden and the Democrats in November for it, among many other things. Bill's, Bill's question is a good one. Is within the law that oversees DHS, and I know it's broad and maybe it could be interpreted in a lot of different ways, but would such a board actually congressionally be something that in law would make sense there? Yeah, we're going to look very closely at it, Dana. Look, DHS is failing right now at some of its core responsibilities, like protecting our border. They shouldn't be branching out and becoming censors along with social media companies and uh, other major media companies. Senator, thank you. Um, we keep you for the hour, but I think you got other things to <laughs> thank do. Thank you. <laughs> Tom Cotton, thank Thanks, you. Thanks, Bill. Senator. Thanks, Dana. You bet.